So at the moment, I'm kind of going not without too much of a goal. I'm just looking at the software. I will have for us handouts that kind of explain it a little bit more in, in a process, because again, there's no book for this. So I would love there for, there for there to be a book that walks us through all of this. It's almost like every few semesters I, I kind of write a little mini book when we get to part two of the class, because there's different things we need to do. The software is installed, we went to file new, we created a project, we checked it in a browser. It's all HTML, CSS, and JavaScript code that we can edit. Well, that screen that I couldn't find a moment ago, I found it. It's over here if you, want, if you ever need to get back to it under Project Overview. If you close that overview screen, you can get back to it under Project Overview. This is a nice overall screen that helps you orient yourself and read different tutorials on what you can do with Visual Studio. So if you ever close that, you can get it back from Project Overview. Let's say I close all of these files for a moment. I have nothing here to edit. I have some output items. If that bothers you, like me, you can clear the output. Get a little clear all. Doesn't matter, but I don't need to look at that for the moment, so I will clear it. So we've got an output screen, which gives us console output and such. We've got our main editor screen. On the right side, the solutions the Solution Explorer where we can open files. We might have different properties when you select a file or you select an element there may be properties. So this is a screen. How many of you have ever used Eclipse before? Eclipse is another IDE, another editor, another integrated development environment to create projects. Eclipse is pretty famous. Visual Studio is Microsoft's version. And when you get this complex, you've got lots of panels to look at, lots of menus and submenus. Have you have any of you ever used Xcode before? A few people. That's the Apple version to make apps. Well, uh, Android or Google, they have their own editor as well, Android Studio. Now you would use Android Studio traditionally to write your code in Java to make your Android app. The purpose of Android Studio is to make an Android app writing Java. The purpose of Xcode is to make an iPhone app on the Mac with Objective-C or Swift. Well, Visual Studio, originally, its goal was to use C++ or C Sharp to make Windows apps. But again, they've seen that the future is mobile, and now with Visual Studio, you can basically make all the apps with all the languages with the one software. This project that we created a moment ago at the beginning, before I did very much to it, was only about one megabyte. Now that I've actually compiled it and actually ran it on a real device, it's gone up to 10. Well, on this particular flash drive, 45, there's a difference between the two, whatever, 45 megabytes. So I went from, you know, 2 megabytes to 45 megabytes. As I then add to it the uh, iPhone code, or compile for iPhone, that is, or compile for Windows, the project gets bigger. We can see if you scroll down in your Solution Explorer, double-click on Config XML. This is one of the most important files we'll look at that is outside of the WW folder. The only things you really ever need to work with in a project in Visual Studio are going to be what's inside the WW folder, web stuff, and Config XML. Double-click it, and it pops up with a nice nice looking interface. We'll come back to that in a moment. Close it. .xml. Doesn't that mean code? Well, Visual Studio, if you double click it, will show it to you as a nice interface where you can click nice buttons and such. Instead, if you right click it, view code, that's what we're looking at in raw code. This 
config XML file defines many aspects about how our project will look or function on Android, how it will function on iOS. We're not really going to do much on this screen. I'm just showing this screen to scare you. So close it, and we can double-click it as normal to view in the nice, pretty interface. The same thing that you can do in the code, you can do in the, what do they call it, right-click designer. So the code, the view code, or view designer. It's kind of like Dreamweaver, if you use Dreamweaver. Design view, code view. Anyway, config XML file in designer view. So behind the scenes, we're using Cordova 6.3.1 and other stuff in the background, Node, NPM, etc. And we've got the ability built in right now to be using Cordova for Android, Cordova for iOS, and Cordova for Windows. These numbers here, don't worry about them. They don't match up with the operating system of the real operating system. Right now, Android is on version 7 point something. That's not the same. Don't worry that this says 5. We're not targeting Android 5. This is Cordova Android 5. If you don't get the difference, don't worry about it. iOS. It's currently on iOS 8, or where is it, 10 now? 9 or something? 10. I'm, I stopped paying attention, so it's on 10. It, this, not, this is not saying iOS 4, which is like from 7 years ago. This is Cordova's implementation to interface with iOS version 4. Don't worry about it. This is not saying we're, we're targeting Windows version 4. We're on, Win we're on Windows 10, and that's not that. So don't worry about it. It's just informational. On the left side, common. Here's some important stuff that we'll look at in more detail as time goes on. Use this page to set the core properties of your app. Properties set here are applied to all platforms. Display name, which is what we created a little while ago, test one, this is what will appear as the icon when it gets installed on a real device. If I were to exit back to my home screen of my device and go to my apps, I have down here at the bottom, test one. So whatever I wrote right there is what will appear as the icon on a real device. You cannot see that right now in the simulator. It cannot simulate that. But if you run it on a real device, this is the name that will appear. The default of what page we look at first in the app, index.html. We shouldn't change that, but we could. So if my first page of my HTML project is home.html, I would change it, but you shouldn't. The first page of your app should be index.html, just like we were working with jQuery Mobile last month. Default locale, you can change that to various locales. You know, if we're targeting a Japanese audience, I can change that to jp.jp. Don't change it, but we would look up how we can change it later. We're targeting English, US. Package name, this will make more sense later once we actually publish our app to the App Store. This will be the unique identifier to separate your app from every other app in the App Store. You might have noticed in the App Store, perhaps there's a lot of calculator apps. There's a lot of weather apps. A lot of them are simply called weather. Well, to separate one weather app from another weather app, they have a package name. And this is in the format of a reverse domain name. Cordova.io. That is a real website. If you visit Cordova.io, it is a real website, part of the Cordova team. Eventually, we will change this to be something like com.yourlastname.the name of my project. Don't change it at the moment, but that's what that means. You don't need to have a real domain name for this class or to publish your app. doesn't matter. You can make it up. But this is what's going to identify my Test1 app from everyone else's Test1 app on the App Store. Version number should make sense. This is version 1 of our project. You know, this week we're going to work with version 1.1. Next week we'll work with 1.2. Whatever. These numbers are arbitrary. You can name them however you want. One way that we could do this is call this version 
2017.07. What's today? 06. Well, tomorrow's 707, isn't it? 2017.0707. Wow. So, um, you know, that's a number. It doesn't matter. But it's version 1.1.2017.0706. To keep track, to keep it separate from when we when from next month we'll release a version two point one dot twenty seventeen oh eight oh eight whatever it's just some way to keep track of the version numbers of your app any number here doesn't matter author and description pretty self-explanatory you would write your name your company name your developer name whatever you want. You don't need to have created a developer's account at the various app stores first. You could right away make up your company, victorsapps.llc. Great. I'm a real company. You could go through the process of getting a real business license and all of that stuff. Sure. But the great thing about making apps is... You know, friendlyapps.biz. I'm a company. Buy my app. You can, make up, you can make up a company right away and start publishing. You don't need anything special, really. You do have to pay the, de the, the developer's portal to publish your app, but then after that, you're a company. So then there's a description. And um, that can be whatever description for this app. Orientation. Um, you might not you might not see it when you run it on a browser, but if I'm running the app on a real device, right now I'm in portrait orientation. You may be able to see that you know it looks vertical. If I go landscape, it orients itself to landscape view, to columns and such. So that's the default. It it changes. That's what it says here. Landscape or portrait. I can set this to portrait orientation. I can save it and then redeploy it and now it will only be locked to portrait orientation. So some of these aspects of the app can be changed in this config XML file. Like this is the deep level stuff of the device. I believe we can affect that via JavaScript, but it's simply here a button that we click, Portrait. You save it, you deploy it, and it's Portrait. This time it only took 8.7 seconds to process. Last time it took a couple of minutes. In the meantime, is the app going to be full screen or not? Games are often full screen. I want every little millimeter of the screen for my game. Full screen is set to no, so you still see your nav bar and stuff. Um, so anyway, the app loaded up. The app loaded up, I locked it to portrait. It's portrait. It's portrait. So I set the button, it's portrait. If I set it to full screen, it would take away the top nav bar about my battery life and all of that. Domain access, these are for security purposes, we should set what are the valid online resources we can connect to. It was, uh, it's a security problem if your app can connect to anything on the internet because perhaps the traffic can be intercepted and perhaps you can get hacked. So later we will see how it's important for us to set domain access, the valid sites that your app can connect to. Uh, plugins, we'll look at plugins a little later. Then we've got Windows, Android, iOS. Then there are platform specific settings. For example, Android. Use this page to set the properties for the Android version of your app. Uh, the version of my code API. This will make sense a little later keep running in the background, options for iOS. What does it mean, API? App application Programming Interface, which is um, how can we connect to the actual features of the device? What code, 
do we write to activate the camera? What's the API? iOS, we can target, is our app going to target iPads or iPhones or both? Is our storage going to, if we store stuff in our app, will it also store in the cloud or not? And then on Windows, different version numbers, what version of Windows are we targeting? So this config XML file, I'm going to change various aspects of it as time goes on. Right, so from my handout, let's go back and look at this first link, the getting started screen. You can double click it, it might pop up to ask about loading the link. You can allow it. Double click the first one. So here's the screen again how to, to download, some guidance. There's lots of great videos that you should watch. And then a whole section here on mobile apps. So, there, so Visual Studio has two big ways. Two big methods for you to make your apps the Cordova way or Xamarin. I don't think I've heard it pronounced in the real world, so that's how I would pronounce it. Has anyone heard of it in a different way? Xamarin, maybe? I don't know. Xamarin, that's how I pronounce it. There's Xamarin or there's Cordova. Xamarin focuses on C++. So if you have any C++ skills, you can use them to make apps for devices. Most of us have some experience, especially if you took part one, with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, Cordova. The weekend is coming up. I would recommend look at some of these. For example, pretty quickly, you can create a weather checking app. Pretty quickly, you'll be able to make a little app to check the weather via geolocation. It can check where you're at. It can tell you your temperature and wind and all of that. We already have a goal of a kind of app that we're going to create, but down here under Cordova Duo Tutorial, you have nothing to do over the weekend. You can go here, and there's a you know long article, but it's fun, and you can create a quick app, and it'll get you more acclimated about well, here's Visual Studio, create your project. Um, there's a, a way here also. This is using jQuery Mobile. We used jQuery Mobile last month by going to the website and downloading the pieces of the software and putting it into our project. In Visual Studio, you can add jQuery Mobile right away in Visual Studio with a nice pretty interface. And it tells you how to do it here. Uh, tools, NuGet Package Manager, Package Manager here. And in, from this interface here, I'm able to add to it uh, jQuery Mobile, or Ionic, or all of these other, Bootstrap, and Angular, and all of these cool platforms that instead of me having to uh, search for it online and download it directly here in jQuery Mobile, in Visual Studio, I want jQuery Mobile. I can then select my project. We'll do this again later, but I can then install it and it will connect to the jQuery site, it will download it, it will set up all the dependencies and all of that. And I can start using jQuery Mobile quickly. So this tutorial walks you through that, how to do it, what it's made of, more explanation, what the config file is, etc. What the different folders are. There's other documentation. 
think that link is also in my handout. Get started tools. Even more stuff to read on the side here. Videos. So if you want to watch some of these videos, they have this whole channel 9 location where they have these videos on how to do many of these things, um, you know, co uh, video wise, how to set yourself up in on the Mac and all of that. Even more complex later, we would look at something called Azure, which is, or Azure, it's their cloud service thing where you can, uh, people always ask, okay, once we get to the part about using a database, we're going to eventually create a database in our app, and it's going to save more complex information. But we're going to first start it off by having it save data in the device, just like we had local storage saving data in the browser. We're going to use something later called PouchDB, which will save more complex data in the device. People then ask, okay, it saves on this device, but if I, you know, go to another device, I want my data to follow me. Or if I uninstall the app and reinstall it, my, my data is gone. That's when cloud services come in. You will not be able to transfer the data of a, of a user on their device unless it's in the cloud first, unless this gets uploaded somewhere with a user ID and all of that, and then follows you when you go to another device. So setting that up is much more complex, but it is another service that is available, and it mostly is not free. You may have like a free trial for a month or a year, but then after that, this is the stuff, this is how these companies make money. They give Visual Studio away for free. Cordova, they give it away for free. A lot of this stuff is for free. These companies often make money, for example, in cloud storage. I want to have an app that a person logs in, and the next year when they get a brand new phone, they're going to log in and all their data is still there. That happens with the cloud infrastructure, which is not free. So what if you do it with, how do say, like logging with Facebook? Is that through the Facebook app, or is that through... That uh, login through Facebook um, is related to this stuff because it's all cloud infrastructure also. But what login through Facebook is, it, it's not really a, a lot of the data that you might think. Mm -hmm. It's a way to authenticate a person about who is logged in. But the data of the app, all that information, Facebook doesn't really store that. They just have a system to log in, log out. So it's kind of a complex topic which we'll, which we'll talk about, but that's the last piece of the puzzle. Cloud infrastructure. How does this work? Not just on this device, but on another device. One of the things I want to do here is, from these links, we came to this screen here, under the Apache Cordova, let's look at Browse the Docs. On the left side, we've got like a table of contents, Visual Studio 2017. Uh, click on that one, Visual Studio 2017. There's more chapters. What's going to be important for, for those of you that are on the Mac, which I'll have another handout for, but on the side here, builds for iOS. So if you want to create a project that goes on iOS, they've got their instructions there, which is pretty wordy, because honestly, comparatively to Android, this is more complex. You know, I'm pretty platform agnostic. My main phone at the moment is an Android phone, but I've had iPhones, and I have Android testing devices, and iPhone testing devices, and I have a Windows phone. I've got them all. I like to learn. I have them all. But I do have to say, it is harder to be an iPhone developer than an Android developer. First of all, it's much more expensive. 
$99 a year. Second, to set up your device simply to deploy your app to the device is a lot harder. We will look at the instructions next time of how to set up an Android device. It's just like five clicks. For an iPhone device, you have to register with Apple that you're going to use this device to test your apps. You have to follow all of these instructions, set up all of this stuff, and then you'll see your apps on an iPhone. So I'll have a condensed version of it, but it's complex. So when you're doing this at home, you have to decide if you're going to go through all of the steps of setting up your Mac to deploy to an iPhone device, or to set up on a virtual device or an Android device. What I will say about using real hardware, I would recommend you can walk into Best Buy, Walmart, Target, and there's a bunch of Android devices for forty dollars or even cheaper. No contract, no need to activate, that you can use for real development. My real phone is this one. I bought this one at Best Buy for $40 that I only use it to test because I need to test rotation, vibration, camera. I have an iPhone at home also, but again, the setup and all of that, it's such a headache even for me. I just test because I know it's going to work on all the devices. I know it's going to work, but just to really test it on real hardware is such a pain. iPhone, I, Apple makes it kind of a pain. They make it so easy if you're running Xcode and writing Swift and using your iPhone on a Mac. But they make it a little tricky if you follow stray from their path. No, you will. You will be able to test Android devices on a Mac. Uh, but not Apple devices on Windows. On Windows, Windows. yeah. So it's enough to have one computer which is enough to different phones. Yeah, it's not as easy as I would like it to be, but that's a solution. Yes? Can you use old iPhone, iPhone 4, iPhone 5? You could. You could use old iPhones, old Androids, definitely. That works too. So this one that I have here is the one I'm mentioning right here, this Motorola Moto E. This one is Verizon. I got it at Best Buy. It's Verizon. I'm on AT&T. doesn't matter that it doesn't connect to the real AT&T. It doesn't matter. I can connect it to Wi-Fi if I need to do stuff on Internet. So it's not activated. It's not on contract. It's a prepaid phone, which I never activated. I don't care. I just need hardware to test it on. And that's what I would recommend to you. Again, this class is everything that we talk about here except for the part about publishing is totally free. But I do recommend to have a separate hardware for testing purposes. You know, you can look up prepaid Android phone. See all this. A nineteen dollar one from Trackable Phone will probably work fine. Although I would say the ones that are a little bit more well known, like Motorola, LG, Samsung, twenty nine dollar Samsung, that'll probably work just fine on sale for fifty nine ninety eight. Moto G, LG, L thirty three, Trackable Phone. But we can get a used one too. You can get a used one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, just about any device should work, especially Android. Android is the one that is the most universal. It works. You can develop on Windows. You can develop on Mac. This lab is set up for Android. And I've got a cabinet full of Android tablets, too. So if you're, you know, it's, a, it's an expense. If you don't want to make it, that's fine. I have tablets that you can use in class.
it's funny how some of these devices are so old, but they're still $80. That one came out like six years ago. Well, old in internet time, of course. Six years is not old, but you know, I've had this for a year and I'm already tired of it. So um, there's all of this documentation, which I will condense for you, but I would recommend you check it out on your own. Uh, we've got the software, we've got the tools. You know, in the, step back and, and think for a moment. We have the software, Visual Studio, to make any app. We have perhaps devices, an old device. I've got a newer one, but my old one, I put it in the drawer. I can use it. We have all of these pretty low barriers to entry to become app developers. We have some experience in HTML. The, the barrier is time, perhaps, and the idea. I have an idea that I want to make this app. Well, as long as you have the time for it, you can create any kind of app. Uh, there was a saying, paraphrased, um, you know, it's not about intelligence, it's about time. The more time that I have, the more I can learn, the more I can do. So that's the big idea. We're gonna, I'm gonna end the lecture in a moment. General ideas on everything we've talked about so far today?